guys, well, happy New Year's. And in our first miracle of the evening, something happened that I never expected to happen. Ursa Yatsura is back. And I have the exclusive scoop on the reboot, because somehow I just care about it more than anyone else. I'll explain what it is, why it matters, and why you should care too. Ursa Yatsura is Rumiko Takahashi's original breakout manga that made her famous. It had a rocking almost 10 year run from 1978 to 1987. And throughout the 80s, Ursa Yatsura was literally the definition of anime. It was freedom, it was punk rock, it was, was all the cool kids were into. It defined a generation. The series concerns Ataru Moroboshi, a sex star pervert anime protagonist, and his longtime normal girlfriend Shinobu. And then he somehow ends up in a long term love triangle with the crazy powerful alien demigod Lum Invader, aka Lum the Tiger Strip Girl, aka the girl from outer space, who we will just be calling Lum for the rest of this video. Lum ends up becoming obsessed with Otaru and spends the entire series trying to win him over while literally everyone else in the world wants her to dump him because he's a fucking scumbag. It later becomes a love pentagram as more and more idiots are added into the mix and no one is ultimately satisfied with the person they're stuck with romantically. The Beatles said love the one we were with, but Ursa Yatsura says to hell with that. Ursa Yatsura is a cornerstone of anime. I cannot begin to list the animes that ripped off the show or otherwise gained their entire genre just from the fact this anime exists. This anime pretty much spawned both the entire harem genre as well as the sexy magical waifu genre. Now if you only know Rumiko Takahashi from Inuyasha, best way I can sum this up for you is it's older, gender swapped Inuyasha but with no time travel and just non-stop sex jokes. After the initial prologue arc where Lum nearly conquers the world and Ataru stops her by accepting a backwards marriage proposal from her, the show just degenerates into high school slice of life gags and the occasional blown out sci-fi arc set in space where Lum either drives the story into space or somehow aliens come out of space to fuck her up. In the 10 years the show was on the air, it evolved from a basic 1970s anime to a very stylish and very detailed 1980s anime as the budget went up and the animators got more skilled. I watched the whole show myself about 10 years ago when I was living in Los Angeles because it was strangely popular there, even in 2012. And since California still reeks to this day the clashing attitudes of punk rock freedom and sexual repression, Ursa Yatsura was just the perfect show to watch there. Now the anime ran for over 214 fucking episodes in its 10 year run. It also produced 10 OVA specials and 6 feature films. The most famous feature film is the second one, Beautiful Dreamer, which was directed by Ghost in the Shell director Mamoru Oshii. It's definitely one of my favorite anime films ever, and this movie is a very complicated work of art. It's a fantastic movie about the nature of dreams and reality, and it's very much in line with Ghost in the Shell. Considering it came out of an anime about UFO jokes and kinky sex though, the popular opinion with the fan base is that Oshi went rude and just made his own fucking crazy movie, which by all accounts he did. But nonetheless, the movie definitely stands out on its own as the best thing to ever come out of the show either because of that or despite that. If you liked Ghost in the Shell, you'll like this movie too. Although, if you like Ghost in the Shell, you probably won't like the TV series, because it's all kinky sex jokes. But like, the best way I can describe Ursa Yatsura as a glance is that after the first arc, it pretty much turns into The Simpsons. Just Japanese Simpsons. Like, it runs on for too long, it introduces way too many characters, it uses them all randomly, and eventually any pretext of a story arc just melts away into the characters doing random shenanigans every week just to tell a joke and exist as these comfortable friends that you see every once in a while. Ursa Yatsa, because it was so fucking dense, it just never worked in the United States, especially because the puritanical values that think sex is bad have always prevailed in the United States throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s, and even today, making Lum the Invader Girl in her tiger skin bikini just one too many kinky alien sex parties for making it over here. But to my hilarious delight in researching this video today, I discovered that, well, the fucking BBC of all fucking places released a shagadelic Austin Power style dub of the series thanks to inverted British values of sex good, violence bad. Oh my god, this dub is insane. It borders on, on a bridge series where Ataru is a horny, dirty, kinky 1960s swinger. What do you say, Ataru? Will you save the planet and all mankind? Fuck off! I beg you, our civilization depends I on you. I am the simple oversex son of a chiropodist. I will not take responsibility for the future of the human race. 
and they keep making like reoccurring Lil Karibo style jokes. Like this is fucking hilarious as someone who's actually seen the whole thing because I have to say it is shockingly perfectly in tone with the original intent of the original show. Get off! For fuck's sake, don't you realize your obsession with sex is what helped cause all this? It's the best British dub ever. I mean, Jesus Christ. Okay, honestly, this kind of just shows you the kind of tone you need to make this fucking show work. Ursa Yatsura is very openly about sex, and you need to live with that if you're going to adapt it. So that brings us to the 2022 reboot. About a month ago, Crunchyroll reported that a number of musicians were having a contest to remix the opening theme song to Ursa Yatsura for the 40th anniversary with the intention of rebooting it. Rebooting the theme song, that is. Now at the time, this was phrased very carefully that they were just rebooting the theme song, but why call it a reboot at all? Because that's not how music works. You don't reboot a song, you cover it. So it was called a reboot because those lying fuckers were actually playing a reboot. And here we are today on fucking New Year's Eve of all days, and we finally got the final confirmation in the form of a poster showing a very sexy, modern day art style, brand new drawing of Lum, and look at those fucking hair highlights. Anyway, this poster just says very simply, new episodes of freaking Ursa Yasura coming in 2022 to television. Well, holy shit, here we are. I never thought we'd see the day, because the last time I saw Ataru Moroboshi, it was like in a bad Rumiko World crossover video for the Rumiko Takahashi Museum. But I don't know. Ursa Yatsura is a really old anime, and I'm not sure how it's going to work in modern times. Like, in the 70s, like, it started out as a product of kinky teenage Rumiko Takahashi's, like, repressed, like, sexual urges, and now here we are 40 years later, and I have no clue how this material is going to be handled. I mean, like, god damn, look at fucking young Rubico vibing with those chick aviators. But I mean, considering this is a classic of all classic animes, I'm sure the otaku fan base in Japan won't let this be fucked up. I don't know, I'm reminded of the 2017 reboot of Laughing Salesman, which was another 80s anime that got a reboot. To sum it up quickly, the salesman is essentially Satan ruining people's lives. But the reboot was really toned down and really less gory compared to the very violent and malicious 1980s version. Like, it was literally just the same show, but with like none of the gore and same old stories, but now people had cell phones. Reddit is really hoping we're just going to get a straight adaptation of the manga because the original show went so off tangent. But I don't know, I feel like the 70s anime really just did adapt a lot of the manga but it's seared off in its own way because they ran out of material and they made it stretch for 10 years. The last bit of news is the currently rumored cast, Hiroshi Kamiya as Ataru and Sumiri Usaku as Lum. And quite frankly, both of these guys are very prolific modern VAs, so I think that's a good choice. They have to recast since the original VAs are again in their 70s and pretty much retired. I'm really not counting on it, but I wish to high hell Shigeru Chiba would come back as Megane. That role pretty much defined him and kind of made his career. Anyway, I'm super psyched up for this. I was never counting on Lum coming back, but thank fucking God she is. I mean, honestly, I feel like we need Lum coming back these days more than we need Inuyasha coming back, so... Bring on the bikini women. Anyway, I'm Mew Buster Green, and once upon a time, I watched all of Ursa Yatsura because I wanted to vibe with some bikini girls in 1980s space. Cosmic Cycler, man. Fucking Cosmic Cycler is such a good song. Alright, catch you guys next time.